I'd like to call the uh, school board meeting to order. And the first item on the agenda is to adopt the agenda. You would like, you like to suggest an amendment? I would like to suggest a, an amendment um, to move the public address to the, to the board. Uh, let's see, where do we need to move that? Didn't we decide after the board report and before the superintendent's report? To amend that to move public comments up to uh, right below the board uh, report and before the superintendent's report in the essence of our attorney's time. Make a motion. I have a motion by Mr. Fuller. I have a second by Ms. Owens. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries 7-0. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is to move into closed I need a motion to move into closed session to preserve the attorney client privilege pursuant to the North Carolina general statutes listed on our agenda to discuss personal matters protected by state law and to discuss student matters made confidential by general statutes and FERPA. Do I have a motion? A motion by Mr. Drexler. I have a second by Colonel Hills. All those in favor? We are now in closed session. We now return to open session. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Davie County School Board meeting. And before we jump in, I want to uh, bring to everyone's attention uh, that we moved an item on the agenda. The public address uh, to the board has been moved up right after the board report, uh, item number four, uh, because of a conflict, scheduling conflict with our attorney. So just make that note before we get started. Um, first item on the agenda is our invocation. Please bow with me. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace as we make decisions that affect our great county and continue to remind us that all we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit of truth, for the greater glory of you, and for the service of humanity. We ask these things in your name. Amen. And now if you will stand for our Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Next, next item on the agenda is uh, uh, approval of the minutes. If everyone's had time to read over the approval, read over the minutes. I entertain a motion. I have a motion by Mr. Potts. Do I have a second? I have a second by Colonel Hills. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries 7-0. Next item on the agenda is uh, important dates. Um, January 18th, 6 p.m., we have the... Davy Chamber Awards Gala. I think we have a few going to that. Uh, January 30th, right here, right? Right here in this uh, space, we have the Davy County Spelling Bee at 345. That's on January the 30th, 345. Then in February, we have uh, the Board of Commissioners meeting is on the 5th, that's Monday. And then we have a joint meeting. Um, the Board of Education and uh, Commissioners have a meeting at the Davy County High School Auditorium at 6 p.m. Um, that should be it. All right, our next... Uh, sorry, sorry yeah, next that. item on the agenda is okay. the public address to the board. When you said that's it, I wasn't sure if you were ready, but I guess we are. Ladies and gentlemen, we're delighted to have nine speakers tonight, which is more than we've had in a while, so I want to remind everybody of our process and ask you to please respect it. I'm gonna call two names. The first name is the person who should come to the microphone and address the board. You have five minutes. I believe there's a timer that you can't miss from there. Please don't ask us to ask you to stop. Please respect the time. We hate to 
uh, embarrass you or us by uh, having to enforce any rules. We, we want to hear from you, and we're interested to hear what you have to say. Um, when you get started, please give your name and address so that if the uh, administration needs to reach you about anything or wants more information from you, they can do that. And this is not a time to discuss individual personnel concerns you have or other things like that. Jeff Walsh, who's at the end of the table. Jeff, would you raise your hand? I know you all probably know who he is, but in case you don't, Jeff's head of personnel, and he'd be happy to hear any specific concerns about individuals you have. So we hope you'll address general matters and not individual concerns uh, in this forum. Uh, and so with that, we're ready to start, and our first person, uh, is Joel Clampett, and uh, on deck, as we say in the baseball world, is Lynn McDaniel. McDaniel, I'm sorry. My name is Joel Clampett. I live at 231 Bridal Lane, in Advanced, North Carolina, 27006. Good afternoon, Davie County Board of Education. First, I want to thank you for allowing us to speak to you. We are here today to express our dire concerns for Shady Grove Elementary School and the Davie County School District as a whole. We are not here as individuals, but rather a collective group of parents who have children enrolled at Shady Grove. As you are well aware, in October of 2017, Shady Grove experienced an abrupt departure of two tendered, well-respected, successful teachers with little to no notice within mere days of each other. Knowing these teachers, it was very out of both of their characters for them to leave their children so abruptly. Individually, we have all personally met and engaged in several communications with Ms. Sullivan, Mr. Wallace, and Dr. Hartness since October 2017. These communications took place via numerous emails, several phone calls, as well as multiple one-on-one -on -one meetings with several parents. Communication has been difficult and in many ways, an in instance, counterproductive. Third grade is the most pivotal year in the terms of their academic education. The parents prior and the focus has been on the quality of instruction based on DPI standards with a licensed certified teacher. Up until the holiday break, our children did not have a licensed certified instructor for 51 days, which is just about the entire second quarter. Once these teachers left, the parents received no communication regarding the status of their children's classroom for close to three weeks. Thus, all the information provided us was from an eight-year-old's perspective. At this point, the kids also stopped receiving grades. Power school was not updated. No work was sent home, and there was no communication in regard to their curriculum. Yet our students were still tested on the material just as the other classes that had been receiving instructions on a daily basis from their tenured teachers. They had benchmark testing with little to no preparation. When Ms. Sullivan and Ms. Shelton were questioned about the benchmark results, the answers varied from conversation to conversation, depending on the parent. Only after the parents escalated the lack of communication to the administration did Ms. Sullivan send out a voicemail message and an email at 7 p.m. on a Friday afternoon, three weeks into this ordeal, and left no opportunity for further discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker, and um, just so I, I'm sure you're aware, but just to also to remind everybody, there won't. This is a public comment session, so we will not respond to your comments. But um, in in this forum, this is just for you to address the board. Our next speaker, after Lynn McDonald, oh my goodness, will be Miss Doss. Is there somebody named Doss? This is Anna Childress. It? It's signed up after me. Okay, I'm sorry, I couldn't That's read your handwriting. <laughs> That's who's next. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Lynn McDaniel. Um, I have my address on the form, just as it asked to be filled out. And um, Basically, we're here, we support our teachers, and we love our school. And as concerned parents, we took it upon ourselves to really try to figure out what was going on at Shady Grove. And to our dismay, there were several 
alarming issues. Um, in talking to some teachers and through substitutes and teachers' assistants, we found a stressful working environment for some of the faculty and staff. Some teachers were afraid to come forward due to lack of support and fear of retaliation, um, which they have given us clear demonstrations of over three occasions. And this is some. So even if it's two, it doesn't mean it's the whole staff. So two is enough. DPI protocols were not being followed by Shady Grove and its leadership regarding classroom management. We contacted DPI to ask a lot of questions about what was going on at the school. If you see attached uh, Exhibit A, it is the DPI, the North Carolina Compilation of School Discipline Laws and Regulations, page nine. It is attached as Exhibit A to the handout as well as it's been emailed to you. Some children have been physically attacked by other students, which are repeat offenders in the classroom and on the playground. Reference Exhibit A again. Parents were not notified or received very little information and protocols for interventions and referrals were typically not followed. Discover that a majority of calls in the classroom for assistance and interventions for the, by the teacher, and again, this isn't all teachers, um, via walkie-talkie and direct phone calls were ignored. The children were subject to a lack of instruction due to constant class disruption, making it impossible to learn. Teachers would follow the protocol listed within the handbook, which is the Davie County Handbook, and but administration and support staff failed to follow through with their responsibilities. This is firsthand observations by volunteers that are willing to speak to the validity of this. There is also the excerpt of the Davie County Handbook as far as disruptive behavior in the classroom that is referenced there that is published and given to every parent and student in the Davie County school system. Unsafe practices in the school cafeteria resulted in a ratio of 200 students per one teacher's assistant on a daily basis. And this has been a practice that had gone on for a few years. It was reported on December 18th, but it's been a norm. And after um, losing about six TAs last year, few retired, and several cited that the cafeteria was a huge issue. Since it has been reported, several parents have been to the cafeteria to eat, chill, eat with their lunch, chill, lunch with their children, and now the amount of adults in the room vary depending upon who's there and on what day. <clears throat> it has been reported that classrooms were left on several occasions with a student monitor unattended by an adult in the classroom with outside door access with the threat of losing class dojo points um, if a child misbehaved. Again, when we spoke to DPI, this is not a violation of DPI protocol, but when we spoke to them, they said it's a common sense protocol. Several of us have reached out to the administration, Mrs. Sullivan, and in the administration's divide and conquer approach, administration continued with their talking points, stating that parents are happy, teachers are happy, there's no problem, um, the school is run with the exception of a few isolated teachers. On the contrary, several parents aren't happy, and some teachers aren't either. I'm not saying all, I'm saying some. Dr. Hartness took full responsibility for the lack of communication starting in October, but we have yet to see any progress towards improvement. He often references everything as being rumor and miscommunication, which I find ironic because there is no communication. In fact, several parents have encouraged better communication on his part, but he dismissed them saying he would rather address each parent individually. This approach or attitude encourages additional rumors and makes the administration appear as if they are attempting to conceal the problem instead of directly dealing with it. It also is a great concern, given Mrs. Sullivan's history, as to how she was vetted to become the principal of Shady Grove. Dr. Hardness explained that a committee was put together and submitted candidates to him and he interviewed the final three. We personally asked which references were consulted and it was basically the superintendent of the Asheville City Schools. Nobody that worked with or under her on a daily basis. In Asheville, Mrs. Sullivan, as the principal of the middle school, there is a very similar narrative. It was a divided, toxic environment, bully leadership style, retaliation, and a dictatorship mentality. As a teacher, you were either in or out. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next speaker is Mr. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, Childress, and to be followed by Scott Dowd.
Again, I'm Anna Childress at 399 North Hiddenbrook Drive in Advance, North Carolina. And I just wanted to start off by saying thank you, Mr. Clint, for starting off with our prayer. Because when I was approaching this, this is nothing personal. It's nothing against any of these teachers. I love you guys. I've been with you guys for 10 years. And this is the first time I've been out here speaking to the um, board. And before I started looking at this in great length, I looked at, I came across the Great Commission. And the Great Commission, one of the things that said to me was every Christian should seek to bring industry, government, and society as a whole under the sway of the principles of righteousness, truth, and brotherly love. In order to promote these ends, Christians should be ready to work with all men of good will in any good cause, always being careful to act in the spirit of love without compromising their loyalty to Christ and his truth. So that gave me peace before I came and decided to come before all of you. So by definition, the board's purpose is to meet the legitimate interests of its stakeholders in terms of its culture and goals and determine what and direct whether activities are in keeping with the mission. We, your constituents, were your stakeholders. Members of the Davy Board of Education, we are just going to ask you for a few things. Conduct an independent comparative analysis of the five third grade classes at Shady Grove prior to the holiday break. Take a look at see if there are any disparities among the two classes that were left without a teacher and compare them to the remaining three. Independently, compare the assessments at the beginning of the year compared to the reassessments that are currently being administered for new baselines. Independently, let's compare the benchmark scores of all five third grade classes and determine if there is true parity in the students' results. Please track the number of grades entered for these two teacherless classes compared to the other three classes. We understand that the three remaining teachers were actually making the um, sub plans for the rest of the classes. And so they developed one consistent curriculum, which I really liked, which is a plan for all five classes. So it's presumable that all students receive the same assignments. The other question is, who holds administration accountable for the lack of communication and non-compliance to DPI protocols, poor student performance, and for perpetuating a culture of low morale. Consider maybe a leadership style that may match the demographic needs of the students and families. Also, we would like to ask you as a school board to actually create a true open door policy for your faculty and staff that secures their individual confidentiality and protects them from any retaliation, because only then can the true issues come to light and trust in the administration be regained. Lastly, actually, we encourage you to take a calculated look into the 2016 North Carolina Teacher Working Conditions Survey and compare the results with the upcoming one and see if there are any um, similarities and underlying issues. There's actually a study that's called How Teacher Turnover Harms Student Achievement. Thank you for actually restructuring the, teach the classes and splitting up Mrs. Singh's class. Um, that happened just this year in January. It was conducted by the Center of Longitudinal Data in Education Research, which is comprised of Duke, Northwestern, Stanford, University of Missouri, University of Texas, Virginia, Michigan, and University of Washington. And what it did was it looked at over 850,000 fourth and fifth grade students over eight years in New York schools, both big and small. And what they found was that Sometimes it can't be helped, but one teacher turnover in a classroom actually equated to not only emotional fallout, but a two-point decrease in their overall math scores, something which I personally don't want my child to afford. He can't afford to do that, but many of our kids can't. Okay. So in conclusion, what we are here before you today in lieu of the third grade restructuring there's still many, many imperative underlying issues that have gone unaddressed by admin. We have been insulted, patronized, and given misinformation regarding our children's education and also their safety within the school. Many kids have already been pulled out of the school system and parents are actively pursuing other school options as the administration of Davie County schools are failing our children. Davie County is actually failing in the state rankings. You can see here the rankings um, that I looked from the DPI website and the North Carolina report card from 2000, year ending 2015, we're at 41%, which is where 
other schools above us. We went to 19% ranking with other schools above us in 2016, and we are now at 25%. Um, our fear is that uh, if this you. continues. Your time, excuse yes, me, but I'm sorry. your time is up. I'm sorry. Thank you. If you have uh, written materials you'd like to nope. provide to the board. I'm to good. To. I just wanted to say, please take off your Board of Education hats and your administrative hats and think about this as parents of students who are in education and consider if you're willing to fight the fight. Thank you. All right, our next speaker will be Scott Dowd followed by Kathy Bacchino. I hope I said that right. Apologies if I did not. Good evening. I'm Scott Dowd. I live at 134 Sprucewood Court in Advance, North Carolina 27006. First, I'd like to begin in thanking you and allowing me to speak this evening and also thanking all of the educators within the room, past, present, and hopefully future. Um, I've been in the military, traveled the world, I've done many things. That is one thing I will not ever be able to do. So thank you from a sincere piece of my heart. Um, but I stand here before you due to concerns within our elementary school, Shady Grove, and it's not my goal to pursue anything like a winch hut, but just to express my concerns as a parent of my daughter. My daughter is in the third grade. Security and education are the utmost concern of mine. Being that I was in the military, being that I've traveled the world, security becomes the number one thing. It was brought to my attention, as you've been addressed this evening, that security became an issue when you have something like 200 students to one adult. I'll be honest with you, that is a force that should not be reckoned with. I have two children, and sometimes I don't even reckon with them. So, um, it was brought to my attention that the issue uh, was brought about by teachers needing a break. I highly believe in teachers needing a break. Again, I have two, they deal with 20. Um, but there needs to be a better system. And as of the beginning of this year, and I would like to thank you, Dr. Hartness, personally, I believe you were a, a part of that initiation, was to help in resolving that issue. So I applaud you for, for taking that advance and working on that. Um, I want to thank the school for beginning the communication. However, these two issues should not have been in the first place. Communication is always key, no matter what department, no matter what you do in life, you always got to communicate. It starts at home and continues into the business world. Um, so my last concern is the instability inside our classroom. My daughter, luckily enough, has had the same teacher from the beginning of the school year and up to date. That apparently will not change, and I hope it never does. She's been fantastic. She's been a staple in my daughter's life right now, but with the influx of her teacher having to assist with other classrooms, and now with other children joining her in her classroom creates an unstable environment. She's in the third grade, she's eight years old. That to me is pivotal. I know from personal experience, walking into my office after over two and a half years of employment, I know exactly what it's like to be walked right back out the door and not know what's coming next. So I can only imagine what an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old in third grade has had to persevere through this shift. I thank you for taking a proactive approach now and helping in that. But again, my question remains, why did that happen in the first place? So thank you again to everyone. I really certainly appreciate your time, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. Our next speaker will be Kathy Bacchino, followed by Janice McBride. Hello. <clears throat> Kathy Bocchino, I'm lead school nurse um, for David County Schools. I'm also a lover of Shady Grove. I'm a parent. I live at 194 Rabbit Field Lane. I have been part of Shady Grove since 1987. I've had four girls go all the way through Shady Grove. Um, I've been a parent. I've been on PTO. I was a secretary of the PTO. I was on Shady Grove Advisory Council. Um, I just want to say that I think that um, Shady Grove has always had wonderful principals. They have a caring staff. Parents want to move to Shady Grove because it's such an awesome school. They want to move to Davie County because we are a wonderful school system. We have caring administration. We have caring teachers. And I'm going to say on behalf of Shady Grove teachers, I think that we are supporting this administration 
They're doing a wonderful job. Ms. Sullivan is doing an awesome job. Dr. Hartness is doing a wonderful job. And I just want to say that I'm proud to be part of Shady Grove and Davie County. Thank you. Our next speaker is Janice McBride to be followed by Chloe Mitchell. Good evening. Um, I did not intend to speak tonight, so I apologize. I don't have a whole lot right now, but I felt compelled to um, come up here and speak about my new school. Um, I came from Moxville Elementary, um, so my two boys, I have two second graders, one with an IEP <coughs> at Shady Grove this year. Um, my son um, is loving this school, and he loves this staff, and they support him. Um, we have had one classroom situation that um, I brought to the attention of Ms. Shelton and Ms. Sullivan, and it was dealt with swiftly and effectively. Um, my son is happier because of it. I am a happier parent because of it. Um, I have been checked in with several times over the course of this transition for my sons to make sure that they're happy and they're blossoming and they're learning and they're doing what they're supposed to and progressing as they should. Um, I have not, they have always supported me as my son's first advocate and they have said that to me time and time again. I do not feel that they aren't there to hear my concerns whenever I've had them. I also want to bring up that I do do lunch duty in the cafeteria at Shady Grove. I am there for second, third, fourth, and fifth grade lunch. And I cannot think of a time that I am in that cafeteria with less than four school staff members. Um, again, I'm Janice McBride. I live at 222 Holly Lane in Moxville. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is, I hope, I, you know what, I don't think it's actually Chloe. I think it's just me reading your handwriting poorly. Miss Mitchell, but I think you got the point. I'm sorry. That's and Christy okay. Sherman is next. That's okay. I'm Shay Mitchell. There we go. Um, <laughs> it's okay. And I live at 155 Irishman Place, Advance, North Carolina. Um, I am actually a former student of Shady Grove. I grew, grew up there, and I have two kids there, a fifth grader and a first grader. I love this school. I love this staff. I love our administration. Um, and just from the experience that we have had, um, my fifth grader struggles with anxiety and some severe ADHD that we have well controlled, but this administration has been so helpful to us. Um, when the issues started arising, Ms. Sullivan was, when I first approached her with it, she made sure that I had communicated with the teacher first. She made sure her the protocol was correct with that I had tried to reach out with the teacher that we were in at that time and then she was more than willing to sit down with us she helped us put a plan in place she I never felt that she was trying to take a side it was always what was best for my child and what was best for our, us as his advocate for him to be successful um, she was instrumental in implementing those things and he is so confident and successful and loves his time at Shady Grove. Um, I volunteer here and there, not as much as I should, but um, and I've never been at the school and not seen a child approach her or any of the other teachers or administration and they love this staff um, and to me that speaks volumes. Kids, kids are really good about judging character. Um, I've always had great communication with the staff and with Ms. Sullivan and you know I've been they've been very responsive to emails or phone calls or concerns and followed up with me and I just I can only speak from our experience but I just want to say how thankful we are for them. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Christy Sherman to be followed by our final speaker who will be Katarina Forsberg. Hi, I'm Christy Sherman, 115 Fieldwood Drive. This is way out of my comfort zone, but with everything that this staff has done for my children, I feel it necessary to stand up here. I have two, well, three boys, two at Shady Grove, one in fifth grade, one in first grade. My first grader has autism. He is mainstreamed. 
And he, to quote him, he is full of emotions. <laughs> so he, every day I drop him off and I wonder, okay, am I going to get a phone call? What is he going to do? And never once since he started kindergarten have I ever feared for his safety or for his care or for his ability to learn and grow at Shady Grove. And that is because of Miss Sullivan and her staff. The first day he got there and he refused to go in for two hours. <laughs> so he sat in the hall and Miss Sullivan sat with him. She called with updates. She took him into his office, tried to figure out what makes him tick, what makes him happy, what would relieve the anxiety, uh, um, which is what I need right now. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but she went above and beyond and has since then to help him. And he loves, loves school. And even the days where he still gets stuck on the sidewalk, which some of y'all see when he just absolutely gets paralyzed with fear of going into even a familiar place, Miss Sullivan or one of the teachers will sit with him until he can go in and be comfortable with his teachers and his classmates. I volunteer once a week in both the classrooms, and I've always seen the support that she gives for the teachers with him in there, as well as for the other children. So I can't speak highly enough. And 100% feel safe and secure in having my children, especially my child with autism at Shady Grove. Thank you. And our final speaker for the evening is Katerina Forsberg. Good evening. Um, I like to talk, just not maybe in public like this. I am uh, Katerina Forsberg. I am 152 South Hiddenbrook Drive. I'm the school counselor at Shady Grove. I'm also a parent for students at Shady Grove. I have four children and one who is at Ellis now, he went through Shady Grove, and I have two currently in fourth, one in fourth and one in first grade. Um, our administration is very supportive. I am very happy working with them. I feel supported every day. I know most parents feel supported and most students feel supported. Um, like I said, I get like nervous up here. Um, One example would be when we switched our assistant principal, which we got a new one this year. We got Miss Shelton, and me as a staff was nervous. Who was coming in? And when I walked in the door the first day and I saw her and she said hello, it was like one of those people you've known for your whole life who is just so warm. So to say that they're not approachable, in my eyes, is not true. Uh, the same with Ms. Sullivan, I can always come to her and tell her what my concern is, whether it is as a parent or as a staff member. Um, so I'm just up here to support and tell them that um, I support them 100% and I love Shady Grove or my children wouldn't be going there. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the speakers for tonight. Thank you very much for everyone that's got up and spoke and shared. Uh, next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. Good evening, everyone. I want to thank all of our parents who have come tonight to share your concerns and to show your support for your child and for your school. I uh, really appreciate you being here. A number of you I've met personally, either over the telephone or met in my office, and um, I cherish your input. I also want to thank the staff from Shady Grove and our other staff from the district who are here tonight. Um, there's a large group of people from Shady Grove and boards. You may not know the faces as we do. I'd ask the staff to stand, if you don't mind. I'm going to thank them for being here tonight. Wow. Um, I just have a couple items that I'd like to share with the board. It's hard to believe the number of delays and dismissals that we have been in the midst of. <laughs> that we would have a two hour delay this morning with ice on roads and bridges and overpasses and when I left for this meeting it was 63 degrees. But I predict that we will have a regular schedule the rest of this week. <laughs> I hope my prediction is better than the meteorologists. Um, attached to your agenda, because I get a few questions about weather and closings and things like that, attached to your agenda item, I have uploaded a copy of the weather advisories starting at early four o'clock yesterday morning that were canceled yesterday afternoon and the apology from the National Weather Service for missing it. I think it's interesting for you and for the public to see the types of information that we use, not only from the National Weather Service, but from observers from 
our local emergency management and law enforcement. Uh, the, the decisions that we make, we take very seriously, and it's definitely a team effort, and um, I appreciate everybody who makes that, that happen. And I also want to say thank you to some of them who are here tonight, the staff who work behind the scenes to make sure our schools, our buildings, our buses are ready when we can have school in the wintertime. Um, I know that I was on the phone on Sunday with our maintenance staff and with our transportation staff. We would not have gone on time yesterday if transportation staff were not out cranking buses on Sunday afternoon. We would not have had necessarily the type of day we did yesterday, even though it was shortened, if the maintenance staff was not working on frozen water lines on Sunday. So I want to thank them for all they do, the custodians at our schools, the people who were out early before everyone arrived this morning putting salt out on sidewalks. It is a team effort, and there's a lot of people who work hard and really long hours to take care of all of us, and we thank them. Switching gears, since our last meeting, our community lost um, an individual, Mr. Jack Ward. If you have not taken time to read the Davie County Enterprise last week, I encourage you to do that. You will find a reflection on Jack's life and what he meant to this community as a teacher, as a principal, as a school administrator, and as your superintendent. I especially want to thank the Enterprise staff, and I, I talked to Brian Pitts after a basketball game the other night and told him what an excellent job he did of commemorating and recognizing Jack's impact on this community. I had a conversation with Jack's son, Brent, uh, last week because one of Jack's wishes was that contributions could be made to Catawba College or to Davie County Schools, and we've already received donations in honor of his service to this community. Um, we will be sending those donations to Davie County High School to support our high school students in honor of Jack. So if you don't mind, would you join me in a moment of silence to remember Jack Ward and his life and his contributions to our community and to this school district. Thank you. And I know Mr. Ward's family has appreciated your prayers and support. On December the 6th, I had the opportunity to speak with some of our student services staff at a Compassionate Communities Conference here in Davie County, sponsored by the Dragonfly House. Uh, this training was attended by a room full of community partners and agencies who discussed how we can build a safe, supportive, and trauma-sensitive community. How we can best support children who have been victims to physical or sexual abuse or who have witnessed violence how we can support them in, with community services. And when we support them the best, they will be better themselves and our schools will be better places for learning. So uh, I am really thankful for the number of staff from Davie County Schools, our partners with the Sheriff's Department who spoke at this conference and the number of people who were engaged in this topic. We have a number of follow-up meetings, including one with the District Attorney's Office tomorrow. So we're gonna continue to find best ways to support children so we can have a positive effect on their life when adults in their lives have made poor, poor decisions. I want to congratulate our technology and our curriculum department for a $50,000 planning grant. It was a competitive grant through the state that they've been notified was received in December. We have a presentation later in our agenda tonight about that, and it will be an opportunity we feel like that will lead to a much larger grant to support instruction in our district in the future. I'm real excited later this month, me and the staff are meeting together to plan our next steps in updating the strategic plan for Davie County Schools for 2017 through 2022. So let that sink in. A five-year plan, and I, I, I'm real excited about the things that we accomplished in our last strategic plan to discuss those things and also focus on how we can get better, how we can communicate better with our community and our parents, how we can provide better instruction and how we can continue to be a leader in our state and in our nation. So Mr. Chairman, with that, I will turn it back over to you and thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda, I will call Jenda Haynes uh, for the PTEC Signature School Award.
Good evening, Chairman Junker, board members, Dr. Hartness, staff, and guests. Um, as a member of the Piedmont Triad Education Consortium, which we typically call PTEC, Davie County Schools is able to nominate one school per year for an award called the PTEC Signature School. And each year that school award is selected based upon improvements in student achievement, innovative practices or widespread positive change, dedication of students and staff, and parent involvement and community engagement. And this year, North Davie Middle School was selected as our PTEC Signature School and was recognized at, award, at an awards breakfast in December. We do want to thank those board members who were able to attend the breakfast with us as, as we were able to recognize them. Um, I'd like for um, our technology folks to cue a video that Mary Foster created to highlight North Davie Middle School at this awards breakfast. North Davie Middle School is proud to have been selected as the 2017 Signature School Award winner for Davie County Schools. In light of a strong tradition of academic achievement, we are very excited to have exceeded expected growth last year. Our teachers deploy technology in meaningful ways as a Google Apps for Education school. Last year, our seventh grade teachers piloted a new schedule with longer class periods and fuller content area integration and saw tremendous growth. In order to sustain this growth and improvement school-wide, we are refocusing our PLCs and calling them Skull Sessions, where teachers are meeting to put their heads together to problem-solve collaboratively. We motivate students by building a safe and comfortable environment. Our school counselor develops weekly character education lessons in our DC Proud program, helping students build positive traits to be successful now and in the future. At North Davie, we meet students where they are, socially, emotionally, and academically. And our students are fortunate to learn from teachers and staff who are passionate educators. Nice job, Ms. Foster. We just want to say congratulations to North Davie and um, Principal Foster is here, as well as SRO Scott Gant. Um, and we just want to thank them for their leadership and all they do for students at North Davie. We're really proud of them and just want to congratulate them. Congratulations. Uh, next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. And I'll entertain a motion. I have a motion by Mr. Fuller. Do I have a second? I have a second by Mr. Drexler. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Passes 7 0. Next item on the agenda is uh, business items, board policies, and Dr. Hartness. Thank you, Chairman Junker. Um, you have a number of policies that are slated to be updated tonight. We presented these policies to you at last month's meeting for your review, and they are here tonight for your consideration of approval. I do want to point out one policy um, that is significantly different, and that is policy number 7410, teacher contracts. In the state of North Carolina, all of our new teachers now are on a one-year contract for their first three years. Um, the legislature did away with what was considered tenure for new hires a couple years ago. But starting in June of 2018, teachers who complete their first three years will be eligible for a one, two, or four-year contract. And school districts, those of you who have been in school board association meetings with me, I've heard this discussed. School Board Association Legal and Policy Services provided a template with four options to consider for teacher contracts. Uh, Mr. Wallace has worked with um, staff, has worked with his colleagues in different school districts around the district or around the region. We've uh, sought legal counsel and discussed this with um, uh, our attorney, Ms. Wilson, and we are recommending that the board adopt option two which is after three successful years as a teacher, a teacher be offered a four-year contract. Um, if there are questions or the teacher is not in good standing and we want to continue to employ them, that they would be offered a one-year contract um, and not exercising an option of a two-year. We want to show that confidence in our teachers that are performing well and have been with us three consecutive years. 
with a four-year contract, which is very similar to what we would do for principals. That's as close as we can get. Um, so I wanted to point that out that that is um, a significant change based on new law in North Carolina. So Mr. Junker, the board has any questions about the teacher contracts, I'd be glad to entertain those, or Mr. Wallace can, but the policies that are there before you are for your consideration for approval. Any questions? Yes, was there a, uh, what, uh, it, it, let me think how to ask this question. Um, <coughs> is, is there, a way that a, uh, I keep wanting to say the word tenured, I, got, I, I, I cannot use that, an experienced teacher who's been successful in another school system, what is the discussion about, uh, let's say a tenured teacher from another school system coming in in terms of what length of contract we should offer? It's a great question, um, and I want to make clear that tenure did not go away for people who had already earned tenure. Uh, there was some debate about that in the courts, and that was settled in the courts. But your question is a good one. Let's say that someone came to us after a successful teaching experience somewhere else where they had earned tenure under the old law. This policy would require them to work three consecutive years in Davie County Schools under a one-year contract, and then they would be eligible for a con four-year contract at the end of that three years. Um, we've talked about that. Jeff, you want to chime in? Because I know you and your colleagues in the region have discussed that topic as well. As you well know, Mr. Potts, that question is asked, and there's been some tradition of that if you transferred. If, when there was career tenure, you work in a school district, success, one successful year, then you would be offered a four-year contract and again this has been being discussed for a year because we knew it was coming but uh, as you see in the policy there it does say three consecutive years and most everyone in HR and principals and there have been committees teachers and, and other folks across the state are part of some committees in local districts that felt good about if and here's what they say as we you've heard it many times from your background and Paul and Terry everyone if you're, I'm a good teacher, I'm not worried about it. And so that's, that's pretty much where it's landed that um, all of the districts around us and, and across the state have discussed. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'd also add to that, Mr. Potts, you bring up a good point, and why did we not consider a two-year contract? Um, number one, if someone's performing well and they've been with us three years, we should know if they're a good teacher or not. And we want to show faith and confidence into that person. The other thing that must be considered is if our neighboring districts are offering a four-year contract at the end of three years and we would only offer a one or a two, then we're going to hurt our recruiting efforts to maintain the best teachers that we can keep. So that was one of the reasons for this option as well. Any other questions? Need to be voted on. Uh, entertain a motion to approve. Mr. Potts, second. <laughs> Miss Owen, it's only my second meeting. Known you all my life, it's okay. I apologize. Any further discussion? Once, I, once it shut down, I, you couldn't, it's, it's too late. Any other discussion? Chad, you've done it too. All those in favor? Motion carries 7-0. <laughs> Next item on the agenda, Mr. Jeff Wallace gets to talk about the school calendar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, as we shared last time, uh, for information, a couple of options. The, and uh, all Davie County Schools employees had an opportunity to vote on this calendar. And option one was chosen, which is in your packet uh, before you there. And I'll be glad to entertain any questions about that if there are any. And but I'd also want to talk about makeup days. So I'll, let's let's see if there are any questions about this current calendar before I step into makeup days. Okay, stepping into makeup days. As you can see there, it says to be discussed. <clears throat> Dr. Hartness and others, we've presented on, on different occasions about the number of what the what the law says that you attend school either 180 days or 185 days, or excuse me, 185 days or 
1,025 hours. And we have, cal we have to calculate this each year. We are well beyond, we, we are in, our students are in instruction well beyond the 1,025 hours. So what the calendar committee suggested or recommended or asked if we could would consider the board this time is to, instead of locking in particular dates, which as you've already seen can sometimes be difficult and not always necessarily the best thing to follow the given dates for makeup. Sure, we look at early release. Sure, we look at work days that's built into the calendar. But what the pushback we were getting or from some of the schools and the calendar committee was, look, you give us early release days, you give us work days, and we plan to use those days. Now, they understand that weather is going to happen. But the, what the committee would ask, would like to present to the board is, would you consider allowing us to waive a few days to be in, obviously in, in respect to the number of hours that we're in class, like we have done in the past. Sometimes it works out to take a day or it's built into the school year, a work day in the calendar. Sometimes it's better to look at, at waiving that time. So that's a, so that's a recommendation from the, uh, the calendar committee that I'm bringing before you tonight. And again, we far exceed the 1,025 hours at all levels. So help me again with what you were actually asking for. I'm asking us no, not to necessarily lock in specific dates <clears throat> that would be used as makeup. And asking that once and, and if the bad weather comes, that we, as, as again, as we have in the past, come back and say, look, we've spoken to our staff, our principals and, and some folks, and they would ask if we could waive the two days we missed or the one day we missed something of that nature. Now, please don't, I, I did not state this, we would never come and ask you, I don't think, to waive an abnormal amount of days. We, we understand that. And actually the pushback from the committee or the response from the committee was, now we don't want them to waive five days. I can't give up that many days. And of course, we said, of course. So there was a number that floated around of maybe two days, maybe three, which again, we looked at that. What if we did waive that compared to our instructional time, we were in good shape. So, I'm good, Mr. Chairman, I'm asking that we not lock in days, specific dates. I'm asking that when those days do come, that we need to make up time that we present, we get together and we present something to you for approval and ask to potentially for those days to be waived. Questions, discussions? We've done that in the past and it's worked really well with staff recommendations because there's some days that you need to make up because it's getting close to a testing time or a spring lake or whatever. Then there's some days that aren't appropriate because it just falls like one day a week or something. It just, just, just does not work. So we've done that in the past and I personally have no problem with the recommendations from the staff when to do that. Is there a downside that you guys discussed about that? Teachers, which obviously were, and parents were on this committee, as you mm -hmm. well know, when you say wave a day, that means well, they're not in class. And I said, you're exactly right. But they also understand, just to be frank with you, about taking spring break or taking particular days that we have a group that travel. And they said, do we, and we said to the committee, do you feel confident that with the instructional time, and they said yes. So really the downside, it gives us more flexibility. That's what we're looking for. That's the big thing that we need to, 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 uh, <clears throat> to Barbara's point, when does it fall? When does it land? And so that, so really, I don't know that there's a true downside considering the amount of time we're in, in class. I think, I think what, what has happened in the past, maybe as recent as last year, we had, you know, we had some days that we actually waived, and we couldn't get those days in that particular quarter, or testing had already been done, and it really, there was nothing, there was no benefit. So that's what you're talking about. Absolutely, Chad, and that, and, and again, where does it fall? Are you at your end of a quarter? Are you right, are you butting up against some type of testing, or some type of, you know, professional development that we've paid for, and now here comes the, we want to come take that day away. So yeah, it does provide us the flexibility. We'll always look to make it up if we can. 
At the same time, we would look for some flexibility in the consideration of waiving those days. So you would, you, you would make the decision quarterly or, or right after you have missed a day? How, how, how would you make that decision? Or when would you make that decision? Let me, let me make another point here. Teachers will always have to work their 215 days, no matter what, which adds another wrinkle, which the, more of a need for flexibility. So teachers will get their 215 days in, obviously. Once we do miss a day, we always sit down, we, the leadership team, and we start looking at the possibilities of making that up because this is vital for payroll. And, and, and Deborah can tell you that. And she, would, she agrees that we have this flexibility. It really helps us. So to answer that answer, uh, Mr. Potts, I'm not sure if it, we just, we typically sit down and look at that. Now we don't want to come to you, maybe a, a board meeting and say, we want to waive this day. And then four days later, we miss another day. So we, we, we look at it again, based on the timing of when that day is missed. And then we'll, typically we have an idea the day that we miss or the next day. Here's where the plan that we can move forward with because we have to get that information out to our staff as well. Yeah, because I like the idea of giving you all the flexibility yeah. that, you can, that you can use. And I think um, when you look at the calendar and the, what we call the bookends of the calendar, the, the soonest we can start and the, the other bookend at the end. For example, in this year, our last day of school is on June the 8th, Friday. Do we want to add a day and have students come back to school on Monday if we miss a day? So I, I think, you know, it's more of a common sense approach depending on where the, the date and the time missed falls in the calendar. And I might even recommend the board consider authorizing the staff to make that decision on the first two days that we waive and then bring anything additional back to you. And then we're not waiting for the next board meeting to make that decision and communicate it with parents and with staff. <coughs> Any other questions? Discussion? Entertain a motion. Do we need to speak that motion? Can you make that into a... I don't know if I'm capable. I think you are. Um, I make a motion that we uh, adopt the philosophy of flexibility. And I think within that, that motion, we need to include to giving the staff the authority per Dr. Hartness's comments to make those days, but anything above that two, they come back to us. Am I correct? You're very, That's you're my very, motion, I'm sticking to it. You're very capable, you're very capable. I have a motion, do I have a second? I have a second by Mr. Fuller. Any more discussion? It's a great motion. All those in favor? Motion carries 7-0. Thank you for all the work. Uh, please pass that along to, it's, that's never fun. It's one committee I don't want to be on. Uh, next item on the agenda is committee staff reports and we've got an exciting announcement from uh, John Marshall and Butch Rooney for the Digital Learning Initiative Planning Grant. Chairman Junker. Board members, Dr. Hartness, ELT colleagues, good evening. Uh, John Marshall and I are here tonight to give you an update on a recent grant application and some good news regarding the outcome of that application. In the third quarter of last year, the Department of Public Instruction invited school systems to apply for a digital teaching and learning grant. Working in concert with the Friday Institute, DPI offered two grants to promote digital teaching and learning. One grant was a planning grant and the other type of grant was a showcase grant. We met and decided that we were gonna apply for the planning grant and decided to go forward with that grant in the third quarter of last year was submitted. Um, right before Christmas, Davie County was selected as one of 21 school districts in the state to receive the planning grant of $50,000 that Dr. Hartness alluded to earlier. Uh, so we have some ideas received and how we're going to apply that grant funds, and John Marsh is going to take you through. Good evening. Uh, the Digital Teaching um, and Learning Initiative Planning Grant 
um, let me make this, um, was submitted in October. Uh, the purpose of this grant is really to determine the vision of digital teaching and learning in our middle schools um, with a big focus on personalized learning and also blended learning. In December 7th, we received notice from NCDPI that we had been approved for the grant and began building the planning team. Uh, we worked with our administration at the three middle schools and our choosing a sixth grade teacher, a seventh grade teacher, two pilot eighth grade teachers, along with an administrator and some support staff in order to kind of make the decisions as to where we go in the future. In January and February, this planning team will participate in three site visits. We wanna get out and see what else is going on in our state to see what middle schools are doing with technology, blended learning and personalized learning. Um, Following the three site visits, the planning team will meet to reflect on their findings um, and set a plan in place for the rest of this spring. Um, as part of this, we are also planning, um, in order to implement this plan in the spring, uh, taking each of this, this group to NC Ties, which is our North Carolina Technology and Education Society Conference. This is the big technology conference held every year. Um, at this, we will be able to get on the vendor floor to kind of see what technologies are out there and available, um, look at new softwares, and also um, be able to get out into some sessions to see um, pedagogy-type things that are happening in the classroom. Following the site visits and NC ties, um, we will um, put together um, a plan for what technology is going to go in these classrooms and we're going to take two of those those two eighth grade teachers and pilot those this year um, from the end of April through June and have those teachers actually have their hands on that technology and Butch and the technology department will be supporting us. Um, the team of six pilot teachers will be prov provided with opportunities to collaborate on lesson development and facilitation of curriculum in this new classroom design. And in mid-March, we're really excited. We're going to contract out with two Google certified instructors who are actually going to come in and coach these eight, these six teachers. Um, they'll work alongside our instructional coaches and myself to really kind of work towards changing pedagogy in our middle schools. Um, throughout the planning grant, the team will review uh, with pilot teachers their experiences of the new technology. And um, talk about lessons learned. So moving forward, as Dr. Hartness mentioned, there's a possibility of a greater grant down the road. So we will continue to focus on that. And I appreciate y'all listening. And do you have any questions? Oh. I've got a question. Awesome. So just so I understand, this level that we're going to start out at is primarily eighth grade level? Correct. And we're going to train the trainers and have the Google people come in and so forth and refine that. And then is there any intent to move it back down to the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade? Yes, absolutely. That's why we wanted 6th, 7th, and 8th grade in this planning team. Right. We're going to start at 8th grade because that's the transition year. Right. Um, so we felt like 8th grade was kind of our best spot to start. The ultimate goal would then be with... The imp with an implement ugh, implementation grant, we would be able to then fill out eighth grade and then slowly work down seventh grade, then sixth grade. Great. And we That's plan, the ultimate goal. We plan to start that uh, in spring, did I hear? Yes. Okay. Yep. Great. Just the piloting of those two classes. Sorry. Those six classes. Thank you. And also, part of this uh, grant implementation, Mr. Potts, you'll remember the Mebbin Challenge. Um, we've stretched that technology a long time. Uh, we have smart boards still in our K-8 classrooms. This is going to give us this opportunity to prototype and get options from our teachers that are going to go to conference and actually experience the technology, much like we did Davy High, with actually getting the input from teachers as to how and what moves we make now to get the next investment in place to take our instruction and continue the technology initiatives that we've already got going. So really excited about a replacement opportunity for that and a funding source to pull that off. I, I'd just like to thank you guys and everybody else that was involved in writing the grant, sending the application in. I know it took a lot of time and work, and I appreciate that. Uh, this is an opportunity, to your point, for us to uh, try some new things and, and hopefully head in a, from a technology perspective, head in a, a new direction. So I, I appreciate all the time.
I also Absolutely. want to say thank you, and I don't think people realize during this grant writing time, you were in the process of the high school transition time too. So these people have gone over, over and above the call of duty, and we thank you for that. And I know the students appreciate it too. But what, what year was that Mevin challenge? 2005, 2006, is that about right, Ms. Potts? What was it, 2004 or five? It went on for three years because I didn't. I right. did not come out of the closet for three years. <laughs> so uh, I think it started in four. Mr. Mevin approached us maybe in three, and Deanna Parrish started the fundraising in four. So it's about four or five. So that technology's been in place now for 13 years. I well, that, that was my point. I mean, that, that's amazing. That Absolutely. Spreading technology that far is, is amazing. But thank you. Very much. Thank you. <laughs> you can <re> say, <laughs> so, Dub, you can relate. Can <laughs> thank you. Uh, last item on the agenda uh, is uh, adjournment, uh, adjournment. I just want to thank uh, everyone that came out, uh, expressed concerns, support. Um, the, anytime the community comes out, uh, this room hadn't been full in a long time. Um, it's always good to hear, uh, no matter what it is. Uh, with that said, uh, any closing remarks from anyone? I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Colonel Hills, I have a second. Mr. Fuller, all those in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you very much.